What's up, navigation traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, April 6th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Volatility is here and it looks like it's here to stay. So always makes our trading a lot more fun, a lot more opportunity. Uh, before we jump in, just want to make a couple quick announcements. We are working on several things to enhance your members area, one of which is a just kind of a, a more robust, updated uh, watch list that will be part of your members area. So as things change, as we add or need to delete possibly uh, symbols from that, it'll always be up to date as opposed to the PDF version that you have now. There's a couple couple different tweaks and changes, but we'll also have a little bit more robust individual stock list. Uh, the each each of the each of the strategies has a very specific specific set of symbols. So there's very specific symbols that we trade on strangles, but some of them we may not trade for iron condors due to the low price of the of the underlying symbols. So a lot of the core strategy watch lists are not going to change much, but we do want to provide a little bit more robust uh, stock watch list to choose from for, for some of your more directional plays. So look for that coming. We've got a, we've got a ton of other stuff coming out that, we, that we're really excited to share with you and I'll keep you posted on in the coming weeks. But let's jump into the alerts for the week and starting with Monday the 2nd. So the first trade we did was an opening trade in IWM. So IV percentile Still nice and high at that 96th percentile. So we wanted to continue adding new positions, selling some premium. You can see here IWM uh, trade is still very centered. Got a little bit of profit, but not, uh, not enough to take off yet. So we'll continue to monitor that one. Next trade is a rolling adjusting trade in IYR. So we had a short strangle. We rolled that from April to May. We just kept kept the strikes exactly the same here, so we didn't change our strikes. And you know, this is our typical, uh, you know, just mechanical way to adjust. When we get under 21 days to expiration, uh, we we roll this out. It reduces our risk. It reduces our what's called gamma. And uh, that only April only had 18 days to expiration, so we wanted to to roll that out. So if we take a look at IYR now, you can see. Uh, we're still very centered now in, in that position. Got a little bit of profit. So just we're, we're about break even on the trade overall. Maybe got a little bit of profit, but just waiting for some more before we, before we book that one, assuming it stays in our range. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in FXI. So we had a short straddle. It was originally a strangle. had been adjusted into a short straddle, and we rolled that from April to May. We made a tiny tweak and we just rolled the call down from 50 to 49 to collect some more credit, get it a little bit closer to price. So we now have the minus 50, minus 49 calls, uh, puts and calls in May. And then we also have another, uh, our other short strangle in May as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at those, those positions here. Here's the, uh, here's the full strangle that we have not adjusted yet. Got a nice little profit there, not enough to take off yet. On these strangles, we like to get at least 30% of max profit if it comes quick. If not, we'd like to wait for 40 or 50%. And then that, uh, that roll from the alert rolling to May looks like this. So this has got given us a little bit of long delta, meaning we need this to go up to benefit this piece. But that's okay because we've got other short delta positions that helps offset and balance our portfolio. And I'm gonna go over where we're at on our delta here after we go through all the trades to make sure that that makes sense. I get a lot of questions about short delta and how to hedge. And there, there are a couple really detailed videos that we've, we've produced that are in our blog. One is how to trade options like a professional. The, others, the other is how to delta hedge your portfolio. So if you look through the blog, you can find those videos and that helps you get an idea of how we manage our entire portfolio using Delta. And we, we beta weight that to SPY, which in, in Thinkorswim, I'll show you how to do that to SPY. If you're in Tastyworks, your position uh, Deltas are automatically beta weighted to SPY already. So uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Let me get through the rest of these trades and then we'll jump into that. 
Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XRT. So we rolled our short straddle. Again, it was uh, once originally a strangle, but we adjusted into a straddle. So we adjusted that from April to May. Kept the strikes the same, so still at the 46 strike. And then we also have a, another piece of that trade in XRT as well. So very similar. Could use a little bit of up movement and some more theta decay to, to benefit this piece of the trade, the 46 straddle. And then if we check off that and we check on our other piece, uh, we've, got a, we've got a strangle. So got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more time to pass, more theta to decay. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we rolled one of our, our short call verticals uh, from April to May, and then we adjusted our strikes down, right? So remember, we've got, this, we've got this down move in the market. So we wanna keep this short delta in our portfolio. So we had a, a, big, a big profit on this piece of the trade. And so we just simply wanted to roll our strikes from 247, 250, down to 236, 239. By doing this, we keep that short delta in our portfolio, we extend the time being in this trade, and we collect some credit for doing so. So if we take a look at our DIA, and actually let me go back real quick because we had back-to-back -back very similar trades. So we had two different uh, verticals, one with four contracts and one with three, we're keeping these separate just because we place them on as, as different trades. So we are keeping their strikes just one point different. So you can see this was at the 247, 250. This is at the 248, 251. We rolled this to 236, 239, and we rolled this to 237, 240. So just one strike different. And that's really more for just tracking purposes more than anything. We could have rolled <clears throat> all these into one trade, but we, like I said, we entered as separate trades, so I want to keep them separate for tracking. So if we go to DIA, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, first of all, we've got this other iron condor on here that, that's pretty centered, nothing to do there yet. And then the two short call verticals, the one with four contracts, we'll look at that one first. You can see, uh, you know, we had, after we, after we rolled the trade, we did have a little pop up in price, so it's not quite in our range, but now, with this big move down today, it's, it's coming back and, and almost back into our range. So just continue to need a little bit more down movement in price to benefit that. And then very similar for the one with three contracts. Um, oops, wrong one. So just need a little bit of more, a little more down movement to benefit that piece. Okay, next trade. It was an opening trade in the 10 year notes, forward slash ZN. So uh, looking at the uh, implied volatility, remember you've got to use uh, the ETF TLT to get a decent reading on the uh, implied volatility indicator. And that popped up to 77 on the percentile. And so I, I mentioned that you could, as alternate trades, you can do a strangle or an iron condor in TLT, the notes, the bonds, uh, all of those kind of are very highly correlated symbols I like to do the I like to do the ZN. It's a very efficient use of capital because it is a futures contract. ZB is a little bit bigger, so if you wanted a, a bigger position, you could use ZB. If you wanted to use a an ETF, you could also use TLT. In this case, I just prefer using ZN because it's kind of right in the middle, gives you a good bang for the buck. So if we take a look at that position, forward slash ZN. Kind of spread this out a little bit better so you can get a better idea of, of where it's at. It's still very centered. I uh, got a little bit of profit there, but not enough to take off. So just waiting for some more time to pass there. Next position was in EWZ. So we sold some more premium in EWZ, opened up a new trade, a short strangle. One of the other questions I, I, I get a lot is, you know, can I do an iron condor? The reason that we use naked positions, strangles, straddles, and some of these lower price symbols. I mean, remember, this is only a 40 some dollar uh, ETF. So when you buy the wings to define your risk, you're collecting much less credit, okay? So with these lower price symbols, sometimes it, you're just not collecting enough credit to make it worth the trade, uh, to, to make it worth the, the risk and the transaction cost. Now, Tastyworks has, has worked to make that a little bit better because the transaction costs are much less of a, of a factor because of their competitive zero closing cost. 
Uh, but you know, if you're in Thinkorswim or some other broker, uh, I would I, I, I typically do not trade uh, iron condors in symbols this low. If if, if you were going to go a little bit closer to the money, like a butterfly, then it can make sense to define your risk. Uh, but if you're doing a kind of a wide, you know, 20 delta where you're selling 20 delta on each side, I like to do strangles because that way it gives you a good bang for your buck, uh, and you're not um, you're not limited on the on the credit like you would be on an iron condor. So you can see here we did three contracts and uh, collected you know three hundred twenty one dollars is our max profit. If we would have bought the wings, you know we may have only collected hundred or hundred and fifty on three contracts. So that that's kind of the difference. Uh, anyway, this one's still very centered, nothing to do there. So we'll continue to monitor that. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in forward slash ES, the S&P 500 futures. And so this was a, an iron condor. And with the down move in price, price came through and breached our downside break even point. So we closed out the untested side, just like we teach in our course. Still holding onto the put vertical side. And then we've also got our long put vertical in ES, uh, which is just that, that short delta trade, uh, totally separate trade from the iron condor. So if we take a look at ES, here is, here's our short call vertical, excuse me, here's our long put vertical that we have on for our, our short delta directional position. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. And then our, uh, here's the long, uh, excuse me, here's the short put vertical from that iron condor. So price is bounced back up, it's in our range, and so still just continuing to hold this. If the market does continue higher, at some point, we'll, we'll take that off. Uh, if it does keep going to the downside, we may either just close it because we do want to keep short delta, uh, but we'll see when that, when, that, when that time comes. And then the other piece that we have is we've got another full iron condor, which is another alert coming up, but I'll just go ahead and hit on it now. We've got this full iron condor, very centered, nothing else to do on that piece. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZS, which is soybeans. And so we closed the call vertical side of our iron condor because uh, very slim, similar to the S&Ps, price breached our downside break even. So we just closed the untested side, still holding that, that put vertical. And then we've got another full iron condor in soybeans. So if we take a look here, this is our short put vertical with the up move in soybeans over the last couple days, price has come back into range. If we get a little bit of more up move into next week, we'll go ahead and close that out and end up booking a nice profit in that piece of the trade. And then we've got this other iron condor here where you can see we're down a little bit. Now the market's closed in soybeans, so this may not be quite an accurate reading. I think the profit line would be pretty close to the zero line if, if the market was open. So just can <coughs> excuse me. So we'll continue to monitor soybeans as well. Market's going to close here in about 20 seconds, so you'll hear a closing bell here shortly. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we've got this long put vertical in Apple, in Apple, and we just simply rolled this from April to May, and we adjusted our strikes from 180, 170 down to 175, 165. And by doing this, as you can see, it's, we're, we're buying it because it's a long put vertical, but because this is negative, that basically means we collected a credit to do this trade. So as price moved down, we're just kind of rolling it down, rolling it out, giving us a little bit more time uh, in the trade and to continue to keep that short delta. Gets the apples down about two and a half percent today. So it's come all the way back down, back into our range. So just looking for some continued downside in Apple. If we take a look at the chart, you can see here, if we just get a, you know, move down to 160 or so, uh, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna give us a, a nice little in a, in a nice little profit position there. And with the rolls and everything, we'd, we'd, we'd be able to book a nice profit. Uh, but we'll, we'll continue to keep this on as just another short delta piece to our portfolio. And then next trade was a closing trade in XLE. So we had a short strangle on in XLE. We went ahead and closed this, booked a profit of over 50% of max profit in XLE. So that was a nice trade. If we take a look at the chart of XLE, what you'll see is that you know it played very nice for us, just kind of stayed in a nice steady trading range, 
had a little bit of a down movement, a little bit of contraction in implied volatility, which gave us the opportunity to, to book that one. One thing I wanted to point out about XLE is that was in April. So if we take a look at the April options, we've, we've only got 14 days now. And so we, and we took this off yesterday, so it had 15 days, which is, which is under that 21 days where we typically like to roll out to the next expiration cycle. Now, why did I give this one a little bit more time? Uh, the reason is, is because we had a little bit of profit, not the 50% that we wanted. It wasn't testing either of our break-evens. Uh, the, the theta, the implied volatility, just had not contracted at all. So it was still holding a ton of premium. And so that's why I wanted to give it a few extra days because we weren't being tested. Uh, there was really no reason that, that, that we needed to roll that yet. We could have and collected a little bit more credit, but instead we just held, waited for some implied volatility to contract. And, and when the market had that couple days of an up move, you know, the premium got sucked out a little bit, gave us that 50% of max profit, and we were able to take that off. So those are just some of the, the little tiny nuances that you, that you only can get from, from actually producing trades. It's, it's hard to provide those type of details in the course. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit more insight on, on why we gave that one a few more days as opposed to rolling it right at that 21 days to expiration. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in ES. So this is where we added another iron condor in the S&P. I already went over that one on the analyze tab. And then we did another opening adjusting trade in wheat. So if we take a look at wheat, we've got, uh, if we go to the analyze tab here, you can see we've got this iron condor still very centered, nothing to do there yet. And then we did another opening trade. So we opened up quite a few positions this week. Uh, and this one was in Tesla. So this was when we had the, uh, the couple up days in the market, we wanted to add some more short delta. So we bought a long put vertical. And as I stated, this is purely a, really a directional play to add some short delta to the portfolio. And if we look at, take a look at Tesla on the chart, what, we, what we're looking at is, okay, we had this huge up move the last couple days and looking for an opportunity in an ETF or a stock. And I just chose uh, Tesla because, um, because we, we were kind of selling into strength, right? After we had a couple big moves, I'm hoping that kind of reverses and, and goes down a little bit and we needed short delta somewhere. And so Tesla is just, it's as good as any. It's not specific like I think that Tesla is gonna crash or, or you know, there's some issue specifically with the company. It's just looking at it from a pure uh, short delta play to blend into the rest of our portfolio, and it was a, as good of an option as any. Next trade was, a, and lastly, it was a closing adjusting trade that we did today in wheat. So we had a uh, an iron condor on, booked uh, almost 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade, and then we still have that other iron condor that I just showed you from a, from a couple of alerts previously. So that's all the alerts. Let's go back to the platform and take a look at some of our other positions. I, I love our mix of positions. We've got such a good diversified portfolio, a good number of positions on right now. We've got oil, we've got S&P 500, we've got Nat Gas, we've got uh, Notes, which is a, uh, an, you know, an interest rate play. We've got soybeans, we've got wheat, we've got Apple, we've got the Dow, we've got the Mexican ETF, we've got the Brazilian ETF, the Chinese large cap ETF, gold, small caps with IWM, IWR's real estate, the Q's, primarily technology. We've got Tesla, XLK, which is also technology, uh, XLU, which is utilities, and XRT, which is retail. So if we go through some of these that we haven't looked at, first being oil. So a uh, big move down in oil. We, we had a nice little profit in oil, but uh, prices come down, so we're about at even right now. So we would use a little pop-up in oil to benefit that piece, a little bit more contraction in implied volatility. If we take a look at the charts of oil, uh, <clears throat> what you'll see is implied volatility did contract and then popped its head back up a little bit today with the down move, <clears throat> but we'll still continue to monitor that. Went over ES, uh, Natty Gas. So in Nat Gas, we've got an iron condor on here which I was trying to get filled. We're almost close to, to booking a profit in that one. 
Uh, but we'll leave this over the weekend and hopefully get a little bit more theta decay, potentially add another piece to this uh, early into next week, depending on where everything is. Went over notes, went over soybeans, went over wheat, uh, apple, I went over that one, DIA, already went over that one. EWW, the Mexican ETF, got a strangle on here, still well within our range, got a little bit of profit, not enough to take off yet. EWZ, kind of a similar story, pretty centered, uh, not enough profit to take off there yet. FXI, already went over that one, we've got two pieces on there. GLD, the gold ETF, got, a, got an iron condor, just waiting for a little bit more Time to pass, theta to decay. Could use a little bit more up move in gold to benefit that one. Whenever IWM, whenever I, I, uh, IYR. The Qs, so we've got a couple couple pieces in Qs. So we've got a short call, a couple short call verticals that were originally part of an iron condor and we're just holding on for some short delta. You can see we've got profit in both of these, uh, but just Continue to hold these for potential a little bit more downside, and then we'll either close or roll those out. Again, just like DIA, these are just one strikes apart to keep, uh, you know, to keep for tracking purposes. Uh, but very, very similar positions in the queues. I already mentioned Tesla, XLK. This is another short delta piece we have on, just a, a long put vertical. And by the way, I uh, I got a couple questions on this this week as well from members. Why are you buying long put verticals as opposed to selling call verticals when implied volatility is as high as it is? And then here's the reason is think about this. Typically when stocks go down, implied volatility goes up, right? So if we're putting on a short position in an ETF like XLK, for, for example, if we get a down move, in the, in the stock, which is what the position is anticipating, that, you know, we're looking for down movement to benefit that position. Well, if, if stocks go down, implied volatility is gonna go up. So that's gonna slightly benefit a long put vertical more than it is a short call vertical. Either one is, is, is completely fine. We're just, we like, to, we like to get every little edge that we can, and if the implied volatility benefits that slightly, you know, that, that's why we're doing the long put verticals in some of these as opposed to short call verticals. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, XLU, we've got this short strangle here, still very centered, nothing to do there. And then I already went over XRT, which we've got these two pieces on, one a short strangle centered and the other the 46, 46 straddle. Uh, just waiting on that one. So those are all our positions. Let's go over to the monitor tab. I wanna kinda of give you guys an update on our short delta situation. So here's all our positions. I like to break these down by the expiration. So you can see most of our positions are in May, which currently has 42 days to expiration. So perfect time to be entering new stuff, which is part, partly why we entered a bunch of new opening positions this week. And, then, and so all those are in May. You can see some of the futures based on how their expiration cycles work are out in June. So we're all in May and June. And so what you'll see is in Thinkorswim, you check this box and you can say, I wanna beta weight all my positions. Now, if I, if I uncheck that and I don't have them beta weighted, then we're, <coughs> excuse me, then we're looking at all these different positions from S&Ps to soybeans to wheat to you know, all these different ETFs and stocks and futures and you don't, and, and each of the deltas is relative specific to that underlying symbol. So you're kind of comparing apples to oranges to pineapples to bananas. And so what we like to do when we beta weight our portfolio to SPY, basically what we're doing is we're trying to get a little bit better idea of comparing apples to apples. So if we look at our delta, if we beta weight, to, to beta weight it to SPY, you can see if you add up all these ones in May, we've got a short delta of just 24. And then in June, we've got a positive delta of 53. So we're actually slightly um, long delta. Now, remember, the S&P 500 is down over 2% today. Uh, S&Ps are down 58. The Dow is down over 560 points. So when we started the day, we had about, uh, we were short over 100 delta uh, beta weighted to SPY. So 
Now we're actually a little bit long delta, and that's just the nature of the game. When you have these uh, range-bound positions like iron condors and, and strangles and straddles and, and, and things like that, your delta is going to constantly be changing based on what, where the market is. So we had this big move down today, so it sucked up a lot of our short delta. You can see we benefited because we, we were up over $300 in the portfolio today. But now we're, now we're in a position where, you know, if the market does keep going down, you know, we're going to have, we're, we're actually a little bit long delta. We're very delta neutral. I mean, you're never going to be exactly delta neutral uh, for very long. Uh, but that, that's kind of how we, how we manage those. So, you know, if we get a little bit of a pop up in stocks, we may look to add a little bit more short delta. Uh, now, if the other piece of that is if stocks do move up next week, we're automatically going to gain some short delta because of the nature of our positions. So that's the whole game is you're, you're, you're just tweaking and managing and, and monitoring your, your overall delta position in your portfolio just to make sure you don't get too short biased or you don't get too long biased. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been following us for very long, you know that we like to have a little bit of a short delta position in our portfolio because if the market does you know, have a major move down, you know, the velocity of a down move like we saw in February, like we've seen a couple days in, in March, and like we're even like we're seeing today, the velocity of a down move a lot of times is, is more than that of an up move. Now we've got some, with the market being as volatile as it is, we're, we're getting some big, big moves to the upside as well. And when that happens, it's typically sucking the premium out of our positions, and that's when you'll see us uh, closing a lot of positions as they, as they become profitable for us. So I hope that helps, uh, you know, looking, looking into next week, we will, uh, you know, we'll continue to, to manage our portfolio. And if we need to add some short delta or, you know, re you know, add some new positions to get that, you know, to keep that balance in our portfolio, we'll, we will go ahead and do that. I anticipate, you know, and this is, this is just kind of market awareness. You know, I, I do anticipate the market continuing lower, breaking through those February lows. And so, you know, we do want to have some short delta. I don't like adding short positions after we've already had big down moves, but, uh, but, we, may, but we may have to to keep that balance in our portfolio where we want it. So I hope that's helpful, kind of walking through our thought process, walking through our different positions. <clears throat> of course, if you guys have any questions, let us know. We're really excited about um, you know, continued trading into next week. Implied, high implied volatility is always a much more fun time to be trading, so much more opportunity. You saw our results from, from uh, the month of March where our profits were, were higher than typical. And that's because when we put on positions, when implied volatility is high, we're collecting more credit. Our max profit is higher. And so it's just a, just a fun time to be trading. So welcome everybody who just came on board and you know we're, we're continuing to uh, uh, manage these positions. And I hope you are enjoying learning what we're, what we're doing here because it's such a powerful way of trading. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.